rules requiring you to have reasonable proof of the potential shale gas reserves that you quote to investors. It's much easier to sell if you just make the numbers up. And one has to keep the investors enthusiastic by showing equally misleading figures about wealth production and lifespan. Secondly, you have your friends in government exempt you from the health and safety regulations, thus avoiding expensive safeguards, which have added to the already expensive process of hyperfracking would make shale gas unprofitable. In New Brunswick, that means getting our friends in government to cut all the legislation that we already have covering wetlands, river classification, and clean air. Because you know, you know what side of the issue we're on. Yeah. I appreciate you standing here and talking to us. I'm very grateful to the government and as an environmentally friendly, low-carbon emissions fuel. What well, electric vehicles and the clear air are not going to be able to do that. Well, alas, even the issue. cleverest business but, plans and ad campaigns eventually have to face reality. Geologists have slashed the claims about the size of shale gas plays. Auditors looking at actual well records have slashed the advertised amounts of gas being produced and noted that most shale gas is produced in the first year or two of the well's life. Well, I, I'd like to. That's that's what we're going to be issuing a statement over the next. I just want to say that give a response to both reports and request the regulations. If if the government would like people to have the idea that it is sincere in wanting to protect people, doctors have pointed out rising health concerns and regulators and citizens to talk about shale gas and assess the integrity of the wells we already have. And economists have cited evidence on the integrity of those wells that they find. and basically well, says what they were saying was too. Fact, at odds with the overall sense of the facts. Like so, you know, there is a real problem for the government from the point of view of, zero of showing its sincerity. Yeah. I appreciate you being here, but I would really encourage the government Essentially, to go out and measure factor factor the integrity of those wells. Shell gas is either a lie or a It is incredible that we're really still arguing about it. But even if all the above wasn't true, there is still this. Scientists have shown that methane has a greater effect on climate change than carbon dioxide, thus making it worse than coal. Last week, the UN Environmental Program reported that without immediate and drastic action to reduce emissions, we will experience the worst case scenario, catastrophic and possibly runaway climate change, much sooner than forecast. Well, this is no surprise coming from scientists who have said this for a long time. From a but the financial institution, so, the World you know, Bank, and, that's, so that's and global business accounting advisors, Price Waterhouse Cooper, you know, get, also issued similar really warnings in the last weeks based on their own research, <laughs> so, thus joining the insurance so industry of and much of the world's military establishments in defining climate well, change as the number one threat the facing the, the world. So, Mr. Al Ward and PC legislatures, can you tell us exactly what is the economic case for destroying the planet? From a commercial perspective. And which were drilled contrary to the law, Next speaker. and the government simply said, Next "Well, let's speaker. let's make an exception here." Yeah. Yeah. You know, so from why should we of the believe NBA that there's, you know, union. like go and with the facts, to the tell the people the position. facts, and, and demonstrate rather than systematically removing obstacles to you know environmental obstacles like. There's proposed changes right now that would lighten up the uh, uh, standards on emissions. Oh, my honor to stand with every single one of you in this fight. No and it is a fight. Under that. I guess uh, that's, I don't know where it's very long. Well, I just like to you know that statement was made by a government employee to my husband. Well, then the employee was wrong because there is no exemption for shale gas under that regulation. We're not supposed to be separate. There is absolute ban. Oh, and that. 
I'm saying I'm not sure about that. Well, so I guess the I'm talking about the clean air the mission, but, uh, the health of they New Brunswickers by protecting air quality and protecting our water resources from contamination and depletion. Thank you. Deal with that in terms of the These are the people that take care of us. I want you to reflect on one point. And that's the key thing. The industry says, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, we can't tell you the recipe of our toxins we're putting in the ground. But if you insist, we'll tell you after we do it. Now, I ask you. Do you Let's want to be a firefighter? Yeah, I'll take a look to see. I'm not sure. If Do you want to be a paramedic? On that at all? And, uh, Do you want to be you know, any of the people like uh, nurses and doctors who take care of us to be called to a site where there's an incident and we don't know what's in the incident? And, and I will that is a no-brainer if I ever heard one on the planet. On those at this point. Yeah. So, obviously, I've been looking at it Next on a speaker, thank you. basis to see what what would have to take place if we were to do anything. <laughs> The next well, speaker I wish you well, sir. today is Dr. Yeah, Matthew Hayes, a Frederick Dean. He's a professor of Neil sociology at St. Thomas Pleasure. University. Unequal oh, distribution of risk associated with shale gas. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, my friends, shale gas is a risky industry. And although there's a tendency to think of accidents as exceptional occurrences, let there be no doubt, accidents are a regular part of it, risky industrial processes like shale gas fracking. And while industry can do what it will, and it will, it, you know, industry has as much interest as anybody else in reducing the risks. Because but the risks are still there, and accidents they will drilling, happen. They have to drill again and again and again. They've Who's going to pay Texas, the costs associated with these industrial accidents, in my friends? Yeah. That's yeah. just the way the industry works. Yeah. Do you think the industry will profit from fracking, so the profits will be privatized. Those with young families but who are trying to the risks will be socialized. In other words, we'll, we'll stay pay in this for the costs of the accidents. I don't know what to tell you on that, man. Risks I've had associated no with the health implications will be borne by our health care system. Risks province. to the workers will be borne by them. Risks I've had, I've to the roads, to to which will deteriorate faster under the weight of water trucks, will be borne by the taxpayers in New Brunswick. So Everybody's got their own opinion on the, the and, risks uh, of it wastewater it contamination. The, the balance has to be right because when you frack a well, all this so wastewater comes so, back up, and you have to do something with that.